Dr. Phil exclusive. To hear my granddaughter beg for her life. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rough. Shannon Watts family. Our daughter watched her husband kill her. Reacts to Chris Watts' confession. He took Celeste's Yankee blanket and smothered her. And Bella's last words. Put that blanket over her too and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way. She said no, Daddy. That's what she said. I think the hardest part now is my granddaughter watched her sister die. It's worse than we even thought. You have a real strong connection as a grandmother. Thank you, Mama, Papa. Absolutely. I'm glad this is going to shut up all the people that are still saying Shannon did it. You took a position to not support the death penalty. Knowing what you now know, what would you say to Chris Watts? Here's Dr. Phil. Today, from Pinehurst, North Carolina, Shannon's parents react to the disturbing details of the prison confession from Colorado father, Chris Watts, who murdered their pregnant daughter and grandchildren. We have been following this tragic story since it first broke. We are learning new details about how a Colorado father killed his pregnant wife and two young daughters to start a new life with his mistress. It's a story that has broke the hearts of family, friends, and thousands across the nation. Recently described as a happy couple, many want to know what went so wrong. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. I have no idea like where they went. But in a video confession days later, Watts told his father he murdered Shannon in a fit of rage, claiming she killed their children. She took a from the dead. After death, Shannon. The husband of a missing pregnant woman is in jail and now charged with her murder. The 33-year-old accused of killing his pregnant wife, Shannon, and their two daughters showed no emotion. Sitting in the first row, Shanann's father, Frank Ruzak, broke down as his son Frankie tried to console him. This was supposed to be such a big weekend for Shanann Watts. Fifteen weeks pregnant, she had a gender reveal party planned. District Attorney Michael Rourke said Shannon died slowly, strangled by her husband. He then smothered their daughters, Celeste and Bella. Shannon's body was found in a shallow grave near the girls' bodies, submerged for days in storage tanks filled with crude oil. Court sends murderer Chris Watts to life in prison for killing his pregnant wife and daughters. The innocent laughter of children is gone. Mommy has a baby in her belly. Again. And the story of a once growing family ended. He's the best thing that has ever happened. On a five-hour recording made inside a Wisconsin prison, Shannon's parents say they have been told that Watts finally took responsibility. A tearful Chris Watts opened up to investigators like never before. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. The Rusics were having a tough time after learning their granddaughter, Bella, watched as her father murdered her younger sister. She then pleaded with him before he turned on her. They hope sharing their story with Dr. Phil would not only end some public misconceptions, but would bring them some closure as well. So glad to meet you guys and uh, so terribly sorry for the circumstance. Thank you. I want to focus on... Shannon and Bella and Celeste and Nico and all of y'all. You've been told what that confession contained, right? Yes. yes. And um, there was information in there that had to do with Shannon, correct? Uh -huh. There's so much in there that you hated to hear, right? When she had come home, there was a little bit of an argument. Um, it went away. They supposedly were intimate. Um, they went to sleep. He got up for work at 4 or 4.30. And the argument, I guess, started all over again. Her saying that, you know, she knows he was, he was cheating on her to the effect of uh, he would never see his kids again. And with that, he jumped on her and he strangled her and said he couldn't take his hands off her because he felt like something was holding him there. Why did you get on her like that? 
That's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm-hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? I don't know. Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm-hmm. You don't know if you knew. I got to try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. Did you look at her? What was she doing? She was fighting. Our daughter watched her husband kill her. I mean, um, while he was rapping her. And with that time, Bella walked in the room and asked him what was going on with mommy, and he said she was sick. We got to take her to the doctors. So what happened, Bella? What she said? Oh, come on. Did she hear something? Is that what she did? Obviously. Thank you. What are you telling me? Mommy don't feel good. Did you take her back to her room? Put Shannon in that sheet. And not in sight. Okay. So, uh, so you carried her downstairs. Back my truck up. So you put Shannon in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats, or, or I guess they didn't probably have car seats no, in your truck, did no, they? No, they was sitting in the back with the, like in that, that bench seat. So, Shanann was back there too? She was on the floor. What did they say about Shanann being on the floor? Not be okay. What'd you tell them? She'll be fine. He put her in a truck, put the two children in a truck, drove himself his 45 minutes wherever it took him to get to the well site and they were sleeping on and off on their way took shannon out of the truck put her down once they had done doing that he came back to the truck took celeste's yankee blanket and smothered her in front of bell took her up to the well dropped her in and then he came back to the truck and Bella had said to her father that you're not going to do that to me, what you did to Cece, are you, Daddy? Bella was still in the back of the truck alive. Okay. Tell me what happened there. She said what happened to Cece. Or she asked, it was, it was the same thing, the exact same thing that happened to me as Cece. Did she ask you that? Okay. So Bella's pretty smart. I don't remember what I said. Okay. I don't know if I just said yes, like a horrible person, or if I just... Put, the sh- put that blanket over her too and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way? Mm-hmm. Okay. She said no, Daddy. That's the last thing she said. And then he took her life. And that's why she fought and had the cuts and Yeah, well, calm. she fought back to him. She knew what was happening. I know it's worse than we even thought. We thought but the worst was what we heard already, you know? We had no idea it was way worse than this, you know? We were hoping it would happen in our sleep or something. Not that a four-year-old watches her sister get killed. I'm so very, very sorry. I I just, you know, I've been doing this for 45 years. There's there's no category for this. This is just pure evil. Work of the devil. He he put Shannon's body inside the the cab. And that floorboard on the floor. That's where they found all that. So this is like a king cab. Mm-hmm. That work truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. four door. So the so. girls were, their feet were on their mommy, but they thought she was sleeping, or sick, or sick. Yeah, well, we, yeah, you don't know what they thought, you know. You can only imagine. Well, as a grandfather, I can't imagine. Those are my grandchildren. I love them. They were mine. What do you What do you say to yourself about that? There's many times that. I just feel like giving up. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. I've talked to my wife, Robin, about this, and she sends her love, and she says, I absolutely know what haunts Sandy as a grandmother is hearing her daughter's voice in her head and hearing her grandchildren's voice in her head. Dr. Phil, I felt my daughter's spirit the moment she died. Something woke me up, and I sat at the foot of, you know, sat up, and a spear went through my forehead, and I, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, Shannon, and I said, Holy, something happened to my daughter. 
I knew. I swear to God, I knew. I woke up Frankie. I woke up the whole house. I said, something's wrong with Shannon. I'm telling you, something's wrong. And We didn't know she was missing yet. You know, we didn't know anything. But you knew. She, yeah, she, she knows all the time. She's got intuition. I don't, I don't know how she knows these things. So she what came did you think when she came to you and said this? Oh, I didn't think anything of it. Yeah, I was like, Mom, you're just worried. Other, she's probably I didn't think nothing of it. What did you learn about Nico at the time Shannon's life was taken? We didn't know if it was a boy or girl yet. They had found out, but they Thursday were night, to release it. Thursday night, they found out. And they were going to do a coming out party of being a boy. But they put that on freeze because he was being... Strange. Um, Distant. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the baby was alive when her life was taken. Yes. yes. And Chris was saying to protect himself that the baby wasn't his. And then they try to say that the baby wasn't alive. So I had to give rights of my grandson to the to the place to, to prove that the baby was alive and it was Chris's. And so there's a medical report now that confirms Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yes. So we know now that the baby was alive. Yes. And the baby was Chris's. Yes. So we have three children murdered here, not two. That's right. right. You, you had a real strong connection as a grandmother to Bella and Cece, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We know that Cece was murdered with her blanket yes. that she loved so much. Yes, yes. Do you torture yourself with wondering what they were thinking in those final Every moments? second of my life. And what do you say to yourself? That they were screaming for their mom and us. No doubt in my mind. I dream about it all the time. I say to Frankie every day, I bet you she was screaming for her Nana and her Uncle Frankie and her Papa. No doubt in my mind. We lived with them for 15 months. Our daughter had lupus. I closed up my salon and moved to Colorado to help my daughter with Cece. So I was there in a heartbeat. You may disagree with this, and I don't mean to impose my beliefs on anyone, but I, I do believe in afterlife awareness. Mm -hmm. and, and I do believe that Shannon and Nico and Bill and Cece have access and... Mm -hmm. What did they say to me when they came to see me? Have they? Coming up. She was at the bottom of the drum and their skin was falling off as they were trying to get them out. They said, who's the one that wears the pull-up? And I said, that would be Cece. They said, no, that way have CC. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, she went from his date... He was really hot. ...to his caregiver. Bailey is a quadriplegic. I feed him, clothe him, bathe him. You're a nag. Don't help me right now. He hates himself so much. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you think you're coping? Maybe a 3. I would say a 0. She has a decision to make. You can be his caregiver or his lover. You can't be both. That's tomorrow. Are you ready to sing Holly Jolly Christmas? Holly Jolly? Hey, Christmas. Sing Christmas. <laughs> 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 Dancing. I'm Papa. You talking to Papa? And Mommy. And Mommy? Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, mommy? Hi. I do believe in afterlife awareness. And I do believe that Shannon and Nico and, and, and Bill and Cece have access and... Mm -hmm. What did they say to me when they came to see me? Have they? Yes. And what did Cece say? The first night when she, they found Shannon's body. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Dr. Phil. I was laying in the bed weeping so hard talking to God and I said, you know, I could just end my life now and go find my daughter. I had fallen asleep. The next morning I get a phone call and they found Shannon's body. I said, do you want me to identify her on the phone? And he said, yeah, you could do that. And I said, is she beautiful? He said, yes. I said, does she have black hair? And he said, yes. And I said, then you have my daughter. That night I was laying in bed and I just felt the presence, and I heard my daughter 
I felt her and I heard her say, I love you, Mommy, and I'm sorry. She told me she was at peace. I finally fell asleep with my daughter at my presence and she slept with me. I just felt her. The following day, I get a phone call and uh, they said, Sandy, we found your grand granddaughter, but we're not sure which one. And I said, Bella's a little taller. She's pretty slimmer. She's not, she don't get a little belly. And um, if you pull her hair up a little bit, because I do their hair, and it'll be so long, you know, and then I realized all the oil, they would never know. So they said, Does, who's, who's the one that wears a, a, a pull-up? And I said, that would be CC. They said, well, then we have CC. And I said, well, keep going. I said, find my, my Bella. And uh, two hours later, they did. It was hard for them to even tell us, you know, you could hear it in their voices. I couldn't imagine trying to be in their shoes, trying to tell the parents what they just found. Yeah. And it was two hours later that they said they had Yeah, found she was Bella. at the bottom of the drum. And their skin was falling off as they were trying to get them out. Everybody needed so much therapy after that. Our, uh, our hearts just go out to all of them. That, that, that work so damn hard on this case. And you felt Cece and Bella's presence. I felt Cece's presence. She was first. And um, she goes, hi, Inanna. And I could see her, but in my mind, you know, but I could hear her. And she said, you've been always so good to us, Inanna. And we love you with our soul. And she kid. I always took their face and kissed them all over. And she grabbed my face and just kissed me all over. And uh, Shannon said, it, it's okay now. And we gave kisses and she turns her to her left. And then Bella came in and Bella went like, like kind of like, hi, Nana, you know? You know, just like the way she, I don't know, just, just don't the know way she did it, yeah. And um, she said, guess what, Nana? And I said, what, Bella? And she said, I can go to Walt Disney World anytime I want. And I said, that's right, Bella. That's right. She thanked us for loving her so much. And that's how you remember those yes, two? Yes, after I, I saw Bella and Cece. And then Shannon was standing there. I could see her body, but like kind of like see-through. And then just her upper part turned. And then she, I couldn't see who was handing the baby to her. And she handed me the grand, my grandson. And... Looks just like Frankie. It's crazy, but looks just like Frankie. So he's beautiful. He's beautiful. I'm so glad that you have that presence and that experience. It saved my rather life. Than, it saved my life. Rather than the experience of just how they were found. Mm -hmm. As a father and a grandfather, uh, how, are, how are you coping with this? A lot of memories. I go to memories every day to see them all. It's it's not an easy day to go through every day now, because we found out what really happened, and to know that they fought for their lives. I hear my wife scream the night we found out that all has happened. Mm. I see therapy, she's helping. It's, it's just an everyday struggle to get by. So you've been told how it happened in the house and then at the site what else did you learn from the tape coming up i mean dr phil what could be worse i just pray to god in heaven that they were literally dead i don't even think their bodies were cold enough to get in the oil i think they were still warm we now return to dr phil's exclusive interview was it your intent the whole time you were taking the girls out there that they were, you were going to do that to them? No, that doesn't make sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking those questions because it doesn't make sense to me. You could have done it before you guys left. I oh. don't. And not had them, you know, alive in the backseat. They could have been with Shanann on the backseat. I don't know, like, why I had them. Like, why I left everything out there in the field and why, like, all this stuff. Like, just, none of this makes sense. So you've been told how it happened in the house and then at the site. What else did you learn from the tape? I think the hardest part knowing our granddaughter watched her sister die and then begged for her life. Yeah, I don't know how much worse than you can hear. 
They say it could be even worse. What could be worse? Jamming their bodies in the eight-inch hole, I, I couldn't... I mean, Dr. Phil, what could be worse? I just pray to God in heaven that they were literally dead. I don't even think their bodies were cold enough to get in the oil. I think no, they were still warm. It's, it's, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty sick. Sometimes I think, how, do you, how, could he, how could he seriously think he'd get away with it? And the only thing I kept thinking was, as a mom, is did he... Did he always play like he was always a good boy and then had a dark side? I don't think he snapped because didn't he call everybody the day before at his job and tell them don't go to that site? I got it. And how cool he was right after when the cops came. He had no uh, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Didn't look sad, worried. Gave three interviews willingly when I told him I wouldn't do that if I were you, but hey, you know. When he first came into your life and came into Shannon's life, he wasn't a problem at that point. No, he was amazing. This was a positive Regular thing. guy, yeah. He's a good dude. You liked him? You thought he was he was a good guy? Yeah. Was he hiding all of this at the time, or did something happen to change him across time? I think him cheating is what changed his whole mind. I think that's what turned everything. Someone got into his head and manipulated him and told him that, hey, I don't want a guy that's already got kids and a wife. I want to start fresh with someone that doesn't have all this, and I think got through his head. And well, maybe, maybe it was, um, like you said, Frankie, about the sex, but also, what, four or five times a day? I mean, with her and look at a porn and besides googling, fact, googling my just, daughter before he wanted she died. A new life. But you get a divorce, right? He, he wanted was. a new life. He didn't want. He didn't want all that. So he wanted a new life. So he took away your life. Yeah, yeah. and and his selfish. family's life. Yes. Very selfish. Yeah. yeah. Was there a time before this that you recognized that Shannon was in danger? Never. When she was in, in uh, North Carolina visiting, we noticed he was being real cold. I mean... But still, never would have thought... But never, you know, he was too nice of a guy to just do all that damage. When she went missing, we still didn't think he did that until we saw that interview. Was like... When you saw the interview of him standing in the driveway... Uh, and I wanted to fly there immediately. That triggered I, you. Oh, yeah, live. You saw what I I'm said laughing about. And giggling you and saw yeah. what I said about that interview with Duping Delight mm -hmm. and uh, all of that. Well, I mean, I, to me, that. Keeping his arms crossed yeah, and swaying. And, it was pretty clear to me that he had done something horrible at yeah. that point. You knew right then. I, I knew. knew. I when knew you that saw point. That. Well, once we knew that all the doors were locked from the inside out, the only way in or out was the garage. Manic Carter, but what, we still didn't think that he would do something like that. You know, we thought maybe he'd put him somewhere. We st we had it, that was the last thing we ran. I through called our mind, seventeen sure. times that morning. I called everybody: the school, Chris, my daughter, the neighbor, called everybody. Was there any time that you believed him? No, no. not at all. Never, never believed him. The first time you talked to him, because we found out he backed the truck up. As soon as I found out he backed his truck up into the driveway, I knew. Coming up. The hardest thing was flying them here because they were in crude oil for four days. So they were flammable. So we couldn't cremate them. And they would have blown up a building. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. This newly released home security video is the last time Shanann Watts was seen alive. After entering the home, Shanann and her daughters, Bella and Celeste, or Cece Watts, were killed by Chris Watts. Watts is currently serving multiple life sentences for the murders and is being held at a prison in Wisconsin. As soon as I found out he backed his truck up into the driveway, I knew something happened. I told the detectives then to go get his GPS off his truck and you'll find my family. He said, what are you saying? I said, you heard what I said. I said, he never backs that truck into that driveway in a year and a half that I was there. Not and one time. Not one time. And then when they said her phone was there and the child, you know, she sees EpiPen was there and all that. Her purse, keys, her phone. I, as soon as he said the car, the, the car backed up, I was like, dude. Yeah. But what did he do with You go thing, find him. Yeah. She didn't run away. She didn't run out the back door. She would not have done that. You know, the thing about the ridiculousness, the, the, the tragedy of this, 
You would have taken those children in a heartbeat if he didn't want them, oh, yes. right? I was their godfather. So he, was, yes. he was taking them like I would have fought tooth and nail for him. Mm. It makes you wonder if, if that's why he did it, because Bella saw it, or or that was already in his And plans. our daughter would have you know? moved on gladly. You know, the, the, the process of a malignant narcissist is, you know, they they look at things only from their point of view and as I've often said your story goes a whole lot better when you're the only one telling it you're thinking it through in your mind you don't think about what's going to happen when that first question gets asked and you go oh uh, I, I don't know you were supposed to believe me yeah and and now you don't I don't have good answers I don't have good cover I don't have so I repeated and, and it was just all about him, 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 him. He didn't think about you or you or you or the children. Why do you think he's telling the truth now? Why do you think he's still? Because he found God, I think. He's eating them up. I think he wanted to say it then, but he was too embarrassed and too sick of himself to. I mean, I don't. I couldn't imagine. We thought we knew the guy, and he, he was a pretty honest guy. And you know, I'm Dr. Sure Phil, we, we loved him. We loved him like a son, and Frankie loves him like a brother. I just don't understand. I think it's eating him up, and I think he was more than glad to talk to somebody for five hours, sitting in a box 24-7. You, you took a position to not support the death penalty, right? Knowing what you now know, would you feel differently? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You would? I would yeah. act a different court, that's for sure. I didn't, you know? I would have said a lot more in court. I was for the death penalty all along. He's still in there for life, so... What would you have said differently in court? <laughs> I think the Italian would have came out of me, honey. No one Bella suffered like that. Yeah, to hear my granddaughter beg for her life. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Well, see, we didn't know what the DA had said the day of court either, that she had bit her tongue. We never knew any of that until, until that day. day. So that hit us real hard, too. And we didn't know that she was face down in the dirt, like a piece of dirt. No blanket yes. no, no blank on her husband. We got permission from his side of the family to have the grandchildren and bury our grandchildren with their mom. But it was the hardest thing was flying them here because they were in crude oil for four days. So they were flammable. So we couldn't cremate them. They would have blown up a building. They had to have a bigger coffin and then they had to seal it with a, a certain kind of uh, wrap so the gases wouldn't leak out. That's pretty sad, isn't it? So we three here never got to say goodbye to our family or see them. It was highly... Or hug them. Or to tell them that we loved them like some did. We would have had to sign a release if we wanted to see them. That's how bad. Knowing what you now know, what, what would you say to him? What would you say to Chris Watts? Coming up... Do you have any suspicion that this mistress has had anything to do with this? Other than mind games? I don't know. It's hard to tell. She was looking for a book deal money at the beginning. How much did Scott Peterson's mistress make off of her murder in her book? It's everything she Googled is what we read in the 2,000 pages. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's given piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things, um, how you get to that point, you know? Like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was like to fight back. Knowing what you now know, what would you say to Chris Watts? Same question I've had. Why? How could you? Why? Just, I don't even know what to say to that. Why didn't you just walk out the door? We found out what you did. Why did you do it? There's nothing that I can imagine why you would do that to your family you want to know life go open a door and leave i mean seriously our, our daughter would have made it without you know his help i mean if he wanted to sign his rights over he could have done that i think um the comments that were made from his family about our daughter prior to the court hearing bothers me every day about them 
believing that that Shannon had that they were okay that Chris killed Shannon but he would never kill his children I don't think that that's okay at all I don't think you have the right to take anybody's life who the hell gave you that right do you have any suspicion that this mistress has had anything to do with this other than mind games I don't know it's hard to tell her looking up wedding dresses and my sister it's just all weird it's all strange she was looking for a book deal money at the beginning, and how much did uh, um, Scott Peterson's mistress make off of her murder in her book? It's everything she Googled is what we read in the 2,000 pages. But that's not keeping you awake at night? No, not at all. I sleep peacefully Just know knowing... what they went through keeps me awake at night. You know? I, think I sleep peacefully knowing that they took me in at night, and they, they love us. They are always there. They're always in our house because they know it's safe there. I think the hardest thing for us right now, um, honest to God, is the way they died. It was inhumane, and it was really bad torture for my granddaughter, Bella, to watch her sister, her best friend. Take her last breath. We were thinking that he killed them in their sleep in the bed. That would have been better to swallow. I mean, they weren't even cold yet, and they were getting pushed in the tank. You know, it just don't make any sense. It's he could have just gotten a divorce. Have you had any contact with his family? Coming up. So you've got internet trolls that are sending you messages. Threatening to kill me. Lies. Sending me pictures with guns pointing at me. I can't even explain how evil these people are. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Have you had any contact with his family? Oh, God, no. No, no, no. They haven't tried to reach out to you to no. write well, to you? Well, the, the, his father wanted to text Frank or called him here and there because he knew that he was going out to get some things that belonged to Shannon. And he asked for um, his trophies from elementary school and high school, I guess, and his jerseys. That's what they wanted. And he had a big, huge toolbox, so have at it. But didn't ask for anything out of the grandchildren stuff. So we gave 90% of that house away to charities. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy about that. You were grateful to his father for one thing, right? Mm -hmm. And what was that one thing? I think it's because he flew out and, you know, um, talked with his son. I think it hit, hit Ronnie pretty hard. I think that... They got his son to talk. You know, right. yeah, I think so. And I think that, um, you know, it's hard to believe that your kid would do that. I believe when he was being interrogated and they said they played good cop, bad cop, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, said, do you think Shannon, you know, they egged him on about Shannon and did Shannon it. do something with it? You know, whatever, whatever. And he ran with it and said, yeah, 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 she she was but they had to come up joking with the kids and blah, well. blah, blah. Well, he at least got him to confess yes. mm -hmm. that, that something had happened, mm -hmm. at least it sped things along. Uh, I'm glad this is going to shut up all the people that are still saying that Shannon did it. Talk to me about what's happening with, with social media. Oh, uh, nothing but lies and rumors, and they're making their own stories up and, and scenarios. And they made a fake page for Frankie. A couple of fake pages. And then said some some yo-yo said that my uh, son committed suicide. So you've got internet trolls that are sending you messages. Threatening to kill me. Lies. Sending me pictures with guns pointing at me. You know, just thousands, millions of good people out there that you ought to see some good things they send us and say, and it's, they outweigh the bad yeah, so but much. It's but it's evil. It's unbelievable. Like, it's like, the, I can't even explain how evil these people are. You can't give your power away to these people. One of the biggest stresses we could ever have in life is losing a loved one. The only thing that goes above that is losing a loved one suddenly. Yeah. The only thing that goes above that is losing a loved one suddenly and violently. That's at the top of the list of life's stressors. And so you're at the top of the stress ladder here, and then you start asking yourself questions that you can't answer, like, why didn't I see this coming? Why couldn't I have recognized pathology? Why couldn't I have been there for my sister? Why couldn't I have protected my nieces? You start playing the what if game, and that can make you crazy. Hi. Hi.
Your mother is very spiritually connected. I'm that way about reading people. And I'm reading you and knowing that that's a pain that you're wrestling with right now. You can't let this tear you apart. You, you've got to, you've got to have Shannon and, and and Nico and Cece and Bella looking down and saying, "The legacy of our lives is not one of pain. The legacy of our lives is one where it's strength, and they're using this experience to save others." Amen. Amen. You've got to create meaning to the suffering, or it makes you insane. We've been together 30 years, and our kids are our everything, and our grandbabies are our everything, Doctor Phil. It's obvious that this is a, a, a loving family. And when you go through trauma, it, it, it changes you mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. It, it changes your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a part of the brain that records all of this and it just keeps playing it back over and back over and back over and back over. And you, you get PTSD, you get depression, you yes. get all of this stuff. And if, if nothing is done to unravel that, it gets worse, not better. Yes. And I want to offer all of you very specialized care here. Dr. Phil, listen to me. If you could help me, I want to be on a mission to hug every woman that's missed a child that's still missing. The pain, the sorrow, uh, not knowing, you don't know what goes through your head when your child's missing. Well. You're using your life right now to do exactly that, and you have a, a voice and, and, a, and a power here that needs to be used in that regard. But I'm still on a mission for my daughter and my grandchildren because they wanted to live. They had the right to live, and they had beautiful lives. They loved each other. They loved their family. They loved everybody that was around them. My mom is here. I'm right here. And I'm going to stand up for them, Dr. Phil, if you'll allow me and you help me. I have a very big platform and you're on it right now and I hope you'll stay on it. Absolutely. Our viewers, Dr. Phil viewers, they're very sensitive to this story. If they want to honor her by making donations to specific charities, where would you like them to do that? The Missing Exploited Children, St. Jude. I like the St. Jude. And the Lupus Foundation, of course. We will make those three prominently known and ask our viewers to, you know, they really want to honor uh, this wonderful mother and these precious, precious children. Thank you. As we look here at these beautiful, beautiful <laughs> images, I, I want these beautiful images to be burned in to the minds and hearts of America. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you, Dr. Bell.